In this video, we're going to go over how you can use some hermetic frameworks as a therapist, hypnotist, or healer. When you're working with a client, you want to be addressing the core root of their issue or problem. So we can do this through dialogue or through speaking with them, or if you're energetically sensitive, have your clear sentience developed to a certain degree, um, you can simply read off of their body things that may be mal-aligned with them. When you're working with someone at this capacity, um, just to have some time with them so that they, you can allow them to talk about what they feel. Now, a lot of the times what people do in the, as a hypnotherapist or as a therapist, when people are just talking about it, they are mostly focusing on diagnostic, diagnosing, figuring out the problems. But one other aspect you can add to it as someone who is trained in hermetics or has these abilities is to produce relaxation and song for that person underneath the problems and, and whatever they're speaking of as they are communicating their feelings. Part of, part of the role of being a therapist or hypnotherapist is creating a therapeutic container for your client to be working within. So one degree or one, one thing you can ritualistically add to this therapeutic container is this quality of relaxation and, and song so that when you open up your, your circle, your space, your container for your client to work from, that they can safely speak about these feelings, they can talk about all these things, and you're holding this container for them so they can speak, and then once it's spoken, it can be released. One thing for a lot of therapists is that they, they when a client is talking about their problems, oftentimes they want to solicit an emotional response from the client, like they, so if someone's feeling sad and they go, oh, I'm really sad. That seems more, that seems to be more validating to some types of therapists. When actually, when someone's talking about something and when they're talking about something from the point of, oh, I'm kind of sad, when they bring it up from an astral level, from an emotional level to an intellectualized level, that's actually one step layer that they're that the client can have a breakthrough in defabricating whatever issues they're working with. Because we have three bodies, right? We have our physical body, and that's the most contracted in the space. So if we have had physical trauma, if someone's been sexually abused, then these layers are much more deeper and, and they're often more coarsely connected to the body. And then we have emotional, our emotional body, and as far as trauma is concerned there, if we have any, if, we, if we've had our feelings hurt recently, or if we were bullied as kids, then we may have a more closed up, we have more closed off aspects to ourselves that are locked in astrally. And every time you're, you're going from physical to astral or, or mental, you're, you're actually, the, the body has become more, you know, less coarse and more, more spacious, which also means that there's more space for healing. So what we want to do as therapists or as hypnotherapists or as healers is help someone go up this vibrational scale as they're introducing their issue, as they're introducing the problem. So we're raising them up from the physical trauma up to an astral by, by expressing our emotion or, or sharing their feelings. And we wanna bridge it up even more by bringing it into an actual intellectual level. We can do this through introducing different frameworks, therapeutic metaphors, or just by holding a container where, where these emotions can be alchemically transmuted into mental fabrications as opposed to astral. Part of the role as a, as a hermeticist or as a therapist is being an alchemist. It's about transforming these core strong emotions and transforming them upwards so that, they, so that our clients can release on them so that they can have higher quality lives. So as you're doing this, then you're gonna get, bring up from the emotional level up to the mental level so that they can be completely defabricated. It's much, much easier to defabricate on the mental level. And of course, if you want to introduce any other types of song or relaxation exercises into the session, um, whether you're doing a hypnotic induction or you're using uh, therapeutic metaphors to elicit open, open gaps through which you can help release these things, um, it's up to you. So if you are working with them and addressing the, um, the root of the feelings, you're asking them questions like, how does that feel? How is this a problem? Is there, any, is there any exceptions to, to whatever emotional state you're feeling right now? Is there a time when you're feeling good? What are some other times that you feel the sensation? What are the triggers for you 
to do this? What are, what, what's your, how's your environment facilitating this? How are your friends and family facilitating this? What do you do when you first wake up in the morning? All, all these types of questions can help break down, defabricate their lifestyle basically. And um, at, the, at the root of many people's problems are their lifestyle. If people are doing drugs, if, they're, if they have sexual issues, then, then the more intellectually they can interact with them, the more they can defabricate the, the addictions that are unconscious. Because the only way addictions can be managed is if they are made conscious. So the uh, core core issue with this is uh, also is also um, is there's a, there's an ethics piece to it, right? So you may be asking yourself, okay, but what if the client doesn't want to release on things? What if, is that an ethics problem? Well, because they're in your therapeutic container, because they've paid for your services there, um, it is not an ethics problem. They're there to release whatever they're to release on. And if they have a trauma that they are not ready to process and you are slowly raising that up the vibrational scale on behalf of them, if they need to work on that, if they need to, uh, if, they, if they wanna keep that and, and hold on to that trauma, it'll come back to them after the session um, or even during this session whilst you're just communicating and talking with them. And it's up to you to choose whether you want to let people consciously know that you're going through this process and releasing up this vibrational scale if someone's more esoterically inclined, then this may be a framework that help, is helpful for them. Um, if they're not, then it might help, it might close them off even further because, well, in Western societies, we're trained to be skeptic, skepticists um, of things that are not, uh, psych, uh, not approved by associations like the American Psychological Association or different scientific communities. So, it, so naturally, that it's, we're more, more um, critical than in other other areas, and so part of, part of that therapeutic container though is is having rapport with the client and knowing what it will work with them as far as uh, as far as what you can and can't communicate to them. So that just that just depends on your client and also your your own style. If you like to keep things more secretive or hidden, as a as a matter of of uh, you know really using the placebo effect so that people feel more affected by whatever treatment you're giving them, that's great. If you're someone who's a bit more scientific and likes to share the process of while you're doing it, that's also great too. It just depends on your client. If you go to a restaurant, maybe maybe a small portion of people who go to the restaurant are curious about what happens behind the kitchen, how the food's prepared, how long it's been in the refrigerator before being done, and how long do you cook it for, in what sequence. But most people when they go to a restaurant are just looking for release. They're looking for <laughs> results in the form of food. Um, they're looking release from their their hunger and satiation So you can also look at it that way for for these particular exercises in relations to working with clients and relation, releasing Now we've talked a lot about releasing things for cl clients, but um, Nothing in the universe likes having a vacuum. So if we create vacuums through the form of releasing um, issues through our, through our through our either our trained partners if this is done in an esoteric circle or group or for our clients as therapists or hypnotherapists, healers, then you have to also think about what you want to activate um, in people as well. Do you want to activate certain qualities to help them with their ascension process if they're in your ritual magic circle? Do you want to help them in love or life or wealth or happiness, friendships, family? Yeah, that just depends on what, what attributes the client wants. If you are working with non-dual light um, or if that's a thing that you have you can of course run that through and, uh, and, and and try to help attune that person to their highest level of attunement um, or their highest level of purpose and of course you do this in your magic circle too for your colleagues so if you uh, if you look at someone above someone's crown and you imagine all the good qualities that they have instead of focusing on their bad qualities um, focusing on their good qualities you can then amplify those good qualities and allow those to become stronger. A lot of the times therapists are trained to discern and look for what's wrong in people and what's, what wrong qualities are there. And of course you need to be able to be in tune with that because in order to make effect change in something you have to be in resonance with it or you have to be able to tune into it. Um, so there's that aspect. But on the other hand, you also want to be, be conscientious of to what, to do what effect you want those tuning forks and resonances and your client to actually affect you, the person. 
So if you are working with clients a lot, then just make a distinction distinguishment between being sympathetic uh, as opposed to empathetic, right? If you're sympathizing, you're, you're um, matching the physiology of the person. You may be feeling whatever they're feeling inside of themselves and, and you might feel that in a specific region of your body. Um, or you may, you can, you, or you may be empathetic to the person and, and, and seeing through seeing them um, and see those issues through them, feel, feel that through them as opposed to feel it throughout your own body. If you're an empath, um, you just be conscientious of this process so, be, so that it doesn't drain you or fatigue you because you do want to have some, some separation from your clients because you don't want to be taking on their issues or problems. So having that degree of separation is definitely essential in, in any of these practices as healers, therapists. When you're activating the best qualities in people, uh, observing of a crown, activating whatever qualities are best in them. And um, you can also run Akasha through them as well, or not Akasha through them, but just you know look into their Akashic body and also see what types of skills that may not be realized in, in this lifetime. Maybe they have past resonances where they were on a spiritual path or where they had the skills that they're trying to work on in this lifetime. And it's just good to scan that and peruse that just a little bit to see if there's anything that's worth activating in this lifetime. But of course, if, if they were, if they're trying to be more concentrated in school and they're studying to be an engineer, for example, and they were a warrior in some past lifetime, you're not going to want to activate that because there's a bunch, a bunch of baggage with, with that incarnation and lifetime. So just be conscientious as to what you activate and just understand that, that it's tied with other things in their past lives if you wish to do this with your clients. And of course, you, it's up to you, where you whether you conscientiously share this with your clients, whether you're doing this process, or if you're just allowing these things to come up naturally. Um, just depends on the level of openness of the client you're working with. If you're a hypnotherapist, it's more, more, more than likely that your client is on a, on a scale to openness to clo being closed is that they already have a predisposition to being open. Of course, you'll, there's always exceptions to this, but um, as, a, as a normal therapist, as someone who sees people, you, you may have a, a, a wider track of people who are open or really close with certain, uh, certain topics and issues. Part of what you put out there as a therapist on your Psychology Today profile or your personal website or through your referrals will kind of dictate the level of openness of people you're working with. And of course, it's case by case. Thank you for your time. Let me know if you have any questions or you'd like any clarifications about this subject and have a wonderful day.